Hello, I'm Grandin Gill, the Academic Director of the DBA program at the Muma College of Business at the University of South Florida. And the purpose of this video is to provide a briefing to faculty and students about the proposal process for the dissertation phase of the Doctor of Business Administration program. Let me start out by overviewing the topics that we're going to be covering. And uh, we'll start by talking a little bit about the qualifying exam, which has taken place prior to the dissertation proposal process. And we'll talk about its background and how the exam is structured. Then we will go on to the organization of the uh, proposal process, talking a little bit about the faculty teams, which are matched up to groups of students, and uh, the venue uh, in our new DBA offices. Uh, we'll next talk a little bit about uh, the structure of the proposal, specifically talking about its components, uh, which are a video and a written portion, and how it should be organized. And then finally, we will talk about the proposal defense. And the defense will uh, constitute a video and a a written portion and we'll talk a little bit about the rubric that has been approved by the DBA process and the deliverables. So the input to the dissertation proposal is the student's qualifying exam and this qualifying exam was uh, required by USF and it was essentially a pre-proposal that was completed at the end of the third semester of the program. And uh, the initial assessment of the qualifying exams uh, was done by either uh, myself or Matt Malarkey. And typically an exam went through multiple revisions before Matt and I uh, signed off on it. At that point, it went to a uh, vote by two additional members of the DBA committee who evaluated the content. And there were three pieces to this. There was a written portion, there was a poster, and there was a video. Uh, the Policies and Procedures Manual of the DBA program requires that at least two votes uh, to pass are required in order to pass the qualifying exam and become a candidate. Um, Matt and I did not pass on an exam uh, until we had actually voted in favor, so it required one of the two faculty members uh, who were evaluating it to vote uh, as well. But normally we would try to get a third, and if a faculty member had reservations, we would often pass those on to the student uh, who could then uh, make revisions. So the idea of this qualifying exam is they would keep doing it until they passed and uh, typically as we enter the proposal process there might still be a few people who had not yet completed it. Uh, once the uh, qualifying exam was fully completed we moved a page with all the components of it to a special canvas portal which is going to be used to manage the dissertation process. So for participants in the program and for faculty, we created a Canvas site, as I just mentioned, uh, that is used as a home for all the qualifying exams. And that site uh, basically has a separate page for each person. And uh, what that page contains is links to the three different files that uh, the qualifying exam uh, consisted of. And this included a abstract, uh, it included a poster in PDF format, and it included a uh, MP4 a video that was supposed to be 10 minutes or less. Uh, in addition, on that page, we included the comments from various uh, faculty members, uh, normally starting with either Matt or myself, and uh, then comments from the other committee members, so that uh, members of the dissertation team that is assigned to that particular candidate can see the past history and how their pre-proposal qualifying exam uh, evolved. 
In parallel with the qualifying exams was the process that was used to group students together into four or five candidates, each of whom would be meeting with a team of faculty members throughout the proposal and the uh, dissertation process. So uh, the teams were basically formed as follows. Uh, during the uh, second half of their third semester, uh, students uh, were either working on their qualifying exam or a paper that was related to their dissertation topic. Uh, in May of that semester, what students would then do was present their ideas uh, briefly, just a couple of minutes apiece, uh, and the idea was to make sure that everyone was aware of what other participants in the program were doing. Once those presentations were completed, uh, in May, the students were given a couple of hours to uh, self-form tentative groupings that were based upon some theme. And uh, those groupings and those themes are what were presented to faculty members later on. Um, so each team gave itself a name, and this was a group that was planning to work together. Uh, what we then did was, uh, in June, we finalized those teams, at which point we now had groups of either four or five uh, students, soon to be candidates, uh, who had agreed to work uh, together with a single faculty committee that was assigned to each of them. So throughout the dissertation process, each of these uh, candidates would be working on their own dissertation, but they would be hearing the progress reports of other members uh, on their uh, group, and uh, they would essentially have the same faculty committee. Once student groups had been established, uh, the next thing that needed to be done was uh, identifying teams of four or five faculty members who would basically serve as the committees of four or five uh, individual DBA candidates. Now, the reason for doing this was to make the process both more streamlined and more structured so that every faculty member uh, who participated on a committee would be supervising enough students to make it worth their while uh, financially and in terms of meeting time commitments. And in addition, uh, to maintain the kind of cohort uh, grouping uh, that the students had been familiar with, albeit the groups were smaller, uh, four or five in this case. So uh, in the process of selecting uh, teams of faculty to work on these sort of overlapping committees, uh, we first uh, began by identifying some external faculty members. Now, uh, the University of South Florida policy requires there be an external faculty member on each committee, uh, and some of them were identified as a result of requests from the candidate group. So we've got, for example, a faculty member from USF Health who was specifically requested by uh, one of the groups. Um, the other external faculty members uh, were identified uh, primarily by people who were highly interested in the program. It is anticipated that in future cohorts, most or all of the external faculty uh, will actually be uh, recent graduates of the program who will be qualified as scholar academics and will also uh, be in an excellent position to assess proposals and dissertations based upon their own experiences. After we identified the external faculty members, we developed a survey uh, that we would use to try to identify uh, faculty members from within the Muma College of Business who would serve as the remaining three or four members of the team. And uh, this involved verifying the scholar academic qualification of each uh, based on a number of criteria such as uh, publication and recent in premier journals or uh, uh, at least three uh, refereed publications within the last five years. And these are standard uh, requirements for scholar academics within the College of Business. 
what we also wanted to do was allow faculty to express levels of interest uh, within the uh, groups that were available from students uh, on a weak to strong scale because we want to tie faculty members to teams that are uh, related to their interests. Uh, in addition, we needed to get some information on their availability since these teams would either be meeting in the morning or afternoon of one Friday a month. Uh, so all of this was incorporated into the survey. Uh, once the survey had been pilot tested, uh, we then uh, sent it out to the faculty members within the Mooma College of Business and uh, we got um, uh, interest from, I think, 27 uh, different faculty members, including the external uh, faculty. And uh, the, we needed to verify uh, the availability with chairs. There are a number of issues that could prevent a faculty member from serving. Among these uh, were uh, exceeding the 1.25 FTE workload, that's the maximum uh, for uh, a USF faculty member uh, on a nine-month contract. Another is exceeding 20% of their base salary uh, in overload over the nine-month period. And so uh, we had to verify that with the chair. Then what we did is we looked at the interests. We tried to find potential groups. And uh, Matt and I uh, worked together to come up with uh, group proposals. And then uh, we sent that out to the DBA committee for final approval. Once this process was completed, uh, we uh, prepared an orientation. And this video is one example of uh, uh, an orientation component. Uh, and the orientation for most faculty members was intended to take place in the classroom so we could have some interaction and question and answer. Uh, but we have also developed an online version, and you're looking at a piece of it uh, for those faculty who could not meet the specified orientation date. So how did we come up with the tentative assignments? I refer to this process as making the sausage. And it was, I'm sure, a very imperfect process, but it was the best we could come up with. Um, so the first thing that we probably did uh, in making tentative assignments was look for a fit with the interests expressed. And faculty members who did not indicate any strong relationship uh, with one of the topics or strong interest in one of the topics uh, tended to be at a disadvantage in this process. Uh, we also then looked to see that each one of the faculty teams had at least one person and ideally two people with experience with the DBA uh, candidates. Um, and this experience could come either from teaching in the program or service on the DBA committee, which uh, does an hour interview of every uh, potential applicant. Um, and these were very important because DBA students are not the same as PhD students. And we want to make sure um, that there are some people on the committee who you can bounce off uh, ideas. Now we also uh, included a couple of external faculty members who were uh, individuals who had been through the DBA program at Case Western. And as I mentioned, in future years we are likely to try to uh, include members of the team who have prior experience with our own program. It's just we don't have any graduates yet, so we can't do that. And uh, the idea here is that we really want uh, this process to generate a, a partnership relationship between DBAs and regular faculty, as opposed to being more of an apprenticeship relationship that you would have in a PhD program, where the faculty member is assumed to know best uh, when it comes to the types of problems being researched. With that, we then started to look at availability. What we wanted to make sure is we did not have anyone on, the, on any given committee who was not free uh, in the afternoon and someone who was not free in the morning. 
So uh, basically, we wanted to make sure that the committees uh, matched the time constraints that we were given in the survey. And where I saw there might be an issue, I would email the uh, individual faculty member just to make sure that it was not irresolvable. Finally, uh, where it was possible, we tried to come up with a mix of departments. This program is an interdisciplinary program, and uh, we really wanted to ensure that more than one department was uh, represented in each committee. Now, it turned out that this was not entirely possible with this particular group of participants because we found that uh, several of the participants um, uh, grouped together in ways that the only strong interests came from one department or another. So we didn't always uh, form committees that went across departments unless you include the external faculty members. Uh, but that was certainly one of the priorities. And since we had more applicants than we had positions, there were some people who did not get selected because they didn't have a good interest fit or because of availability and mix issues. Uh, and that will probably change from year to year as cohort size varies. As the inaugural cohort of the DBA program reaches the dissertation stage, we started to have a significant logistical problem because we needed to have a bunch of meeting rooms capable of holding four to five faculty members and four to five candidates uh, at the same time. And uh, with classroom space at a premium, this was going to be a major issue. Well, um, fortunately, uh, the member of the inaugural cohort, uh, Ali Hasbini, uh, made a substantial donation which made it possible for us to create a uh, space that would be completely suitable for this process. And uh, what we have done is uh, the program itself has, has <laughs> the directors like myself have, have sacrificed private offices in place of having meeting rooms that will serve as our offices when we're not meeting. And uh, we took the old management offices and uh, broke it up into uh, ergonomically designed meeting rooms, each of which has a, a nice technology setup uh, that will allow us to have an, up to four committees meeting at the same time. And uh, that creates a practical limit on the size of the cohorts, uh, which is somewhat higher than the limit that we actually want to have. Uh, because we will have meetings in the morning and the afternoon. And part of the briefing process for those people who come to the face-to-face -face briefing will involve going into these rooms and actually uh, getting exposed to the technology and uh, looking at some of the videos created by the uh, student groups that they will be supervising. So what you see in the background is a uh, early architectural rendition of what these offices would look like. They have enough room for 10 students. Each of them has a 70-inch monitor uh, that also uh, duplicate, uh, serves as an electronic whiteboard. And uh, once again, uh, our gratitude goes out to Ali Hasbini for uh, his generous donation, which made uh, this really high-tech and uh, ergonomically designed space possible. One of the challenges of launching a new program with a fundamentally different clientele than the traditional PhD is that we needed to uh, tailor the PhD uh, process to the needs of the DBA. So uh, the proposal uh, is guided by a DBA policies and procedures manual that has been approved by the DBA committee and consists of two key elements, a proposal document and a video presentation by the candidate of no longer than 20 minutes. And the reason that we incorporate video uh, presentations into both the proposal and the actual dissertation is that when it comes to the defense phase, uh, what we want is for all the faculty members on the committee to watch the presentation portion of it 
before they even come to the defense. And that way the defense itself can be entirely question and answer instead of having the presentation take up an inordinately long amount of time within that uh, defense um, period uh, of one hour that is allocated for each of the candidates. So when you are creating uh, the proposal uh, for candidates and when you are uh, assessing the proposal for faculty, you will be looking at a document uh, that outlines the proposal and a video presentation that will be provided by the participants uh, at least five days before the actual defense. Again, since we don't have any past proposals to look at, the DBA committee decided to uh, develop a standard organization for DBA proposals, and this is included as Appendix D in the DBA uh, Policies and Procedures Manual, and this is all included on the Canvas site that will be used to uh, organize the uh, DBA proposal and dissertation processes. And what we indicated is that all proposals should contain the following elements, uh, an introduction, uh, a section on the research questions and units of analysis for the proposal, uh, some specific uh, theoretical discussions that are addressed by the intended research, uh, key concepts and definitions required by the research, any hypotheses that are being created, and in many cases, the DBA dissertation will not follow the traditional uh, business dissertation of hypotheses and tests. And so uh, what we may see is research questions or uh, propositions or maybe even just uh, statements about what's expected. And all of these things are described in greater detail within the Policies and Procedures Manual Appendix. Uh, we're certainly interested in the research design, the methodology and data collection plan, uh, though not all of the proposals will necessarily involve the collection of data because we allow conceptual dissertations as well as empirical ones. Uh, the expected contribution uh, to practice of the research and perhaps to the uh, research literature, though once again in the DBA program we're more interested in uh, the contribution of research to practice than necessarily uh, building out the literature, and a tentative outline or project structure. And this outline or project structure is going to be different for the five different types of dissertations. And I will talk a little bit more about each of these five categories of dissertation when I talk about the dissertation itself. But in the uh, project uh, or uh, dissertation proposal document uh, in Appendix D, it talks a little bit about what we would expect each one of these different types of dissertation proposals to contain. Not surprisingly, within our Policies and Procedures Manual for the DBA, we also um, include a series of rubrics. Um, as we get started out, the only rubric that we really have fleshed out is the uh, proposal rubric, and uh, you can see this over here. You can't read it, but it basically is a rubric that basically goes from excellent through competent down to weak and unsatisfactory and uh, covers a whole bunch of different elements of the uh, dissertation proposal. And as a committee, you will go through these proposals uh, using the rubric. One of the things that I would emphasize is that the DBA program uh, is very much uh, oriented towards individuals uh, repairing <laughs> any work that needs repair, and it's not uh, a thumbs up or thumbs down type of process. So as you work with the proposals, one of the things that we encourage you to do is to give the candidates 
feedback and opportunity to revise everything they're doing until it has reached a satisfactory level. Uh, but we also don't want you to compromise in um, evaluating these uh, proposals because in a sense the proposal is a contract between you and the candidate and it specifies the maximum that you can demand of the candidate in order to pass them when they complete the dissertation. Now, as we all know, during the dissertation process, there are likely to be uh, branches in the path and there may be things that cannot be done and there may be things that it turns out uh, can be done better than expected. And so uh, we expect a continual negotiation between uh, the committee members and the candidates regarding what will be an acceptable dissertation. But under no circumstances can the committee demand something more than has been agreed to in the proposal. And the rubric is an important way of signaling what you're looking for. The core of the rubric is the same for any type of dissertation that the candidates are providing. However, there will be a separate section in the rubric dealing with different types of deliverables from the dissertation process. And as I mentioned, I'll be talking about these deliverables more within the dissertation lecture itself. But uh, as you can see over here, uh, a traditional dissertation has certain elements that must be covered. A dissertation that's a collection of articles has uh, certain elements. A dissertation that is a project uh, that is not being submitted for publication uh, has another one. In this case, we've got a book uh, that's submitted for publication, has its own evaluation criteria. And so uh, in the proposal, we expect enough detail so that when the candidate uh, decides to deliver something, we are able to make an assessment as to whether or not it is realistic uh, that the candidate could complete it, and also that it would be satisfactory evidence that the candidate deserves a doctorate in business. Throughout the entire proposal and later the dissertation process, we anticipate a schedule uh, something along the following lines. Uh, there will be a four-hour block of time uh, where the candidates are expected to become available and the faculty are expected to be available. Uh, this block of time might run from 8.30 to 12.30 in the morning or it might run from 2.30 to 6.30 at night, uh, always on Fridays. Now, during this four-hour period, we would anticipate about half the time would be allocated to presentations by the individual candidates indicating the progress they've made over the past month. We think it's very, very important uh, in order to keep the energy of this process up that all the candidates who are members of a st particular student group be aware of how each is progressing. Also, since the faculty members are overlapping on all the committees, we want all of them to be aware of the progress of each of the students they're assigned to, even though they will only be uh, chairing uh, two of them, or co-chairing two of them, I should say. Once the actual meeting has been completed, uh, the presentation portion, then we expect to have individual meetings between the candidates and the co-chairs uh, that take place in a less structured way. Now, we don't have enough rooms for all of these individual one-on-one -on -one meetings. However, uh, we anticipate that faculty members will use their offices uh, or uh, may be able to meet with more than one people in one of the DBA rooms. So uh, we'll let that one be a little bit less structured. Uh, but at any rate, this is the basic uh, schedule. And the meeting rooms have the ability to Skype in uh, individuals uh, because the candidates are executives from time to time. We may run into a situation where work conflicts prevent them from coming in, though this should be fairly rare. 
Uh, and similarly, uh, faculty members will sometimes be committed to things like conferences and as a result may have to Skype in. But the goal is to have uh, faculty and candidates show up for every meeting uh, and we expect faculty members to be available for at least 10 of the meetings out of the 13, three for the proposal and 10 for the actual dissertation, and certainly to be available for the uh, defense. And similarly, uh, students or candidates should be available for at least that much because it's really important that we keep the process on schedule because we have told the candidates that they will get through in three years and we want to make every effort possible to ensure they do. So the proposal process is relatively short and in October much of the uh, initial burden falls on faculty members. Uh, the first thing that faculty members need to do is review the qualifying exam for those candidates who have been assigned to them. Uh, and this will initially be done during the uh, faculty uh, briefing workshop uh, that this video was created for, uh, but uh, will also probably be done a little bit before the first meeting with the candidates. Uh, then uh, the two-hour uh, meeting in the uh, second weekend of October is when the faculty committee members will actually get to meet with the candidates uh, for the first time. Uh, they will identify who has been selected as chairs, something that is being done within the initial faculty briefing workshop, and uh, then they will talk about plans for the proposal process, establish uh, what they like to see from each candidate uh, you know, by the next meeting in November and uh, what they expect out of the uh, dissertation defense process. Now, in November, the burden moves particularly to the candidate and the candidates will be uh, submitting a progress report. And one of the things that we want to do is we want to have a progress report from each candidate prior to each uh, uh, residency weekend where they meet with faculty and part of the reason for that is so that the DBA program staff particularly myself as academic director can uh, get a sense whether candidates are running into any problems that uh, may need uh, some resolution uh, such as work related issues uh, falling behind and so forth uh, the candidates would then uh, present uh, where they are on their proposal to the committee. Uh, the committee will work with candidates to outline what the next steps are going to be and of course the candidates will meet with their co-chairs. Now since the proposal process is quite short, um, you know, it's very important that these November meetings be highly productive because the next step of the process is intended to be the defense process in December. And during that process, the burden falls equally on both uh, faculty and candidates. Um, in particular, the candidates need to prepare uh, a video and a written proportion as per the guidelines for the proposal. The faculty need to view the candidate videos before they come to the residency, uh, review the written uh, portion, and have questions prepared so that during the residency uh, we can have proposal defenses from all the candidates. Uh, uh, it is our anticipation that the vast majority of candidates will uh, complete their defense uh, and be allowed to move on with the actual dissertation work in uh, December of their fourth semester. Uh, in the event that there are issues, uh, we will try to figure out ways to resolve them so that uh, by the time the dissertation meetings start occurring in February, uh, the proposals have all been signed off and candidates and faculty have a very clear idea of what it is that they are supposed to do. If after viewing this video you have any questions, 
Uh, I do hope that you will feel free to email me at grandon at usf.edu. That is grandon, G-R-A-N-D-O-N, at usf.edu. And I will do my best to respond to them as quickly as possible. Or, of course, you can also uh, give me a call, and my cell number is 813-416-6175. Thank you very much, and I hope this has been a useful introduction to the dissertation proposal process. The next video will cover the actual dissertation process itself. And since the dissertation process is quite similar to the proposal process in terms of venues and scheduling, uh, the emphasis of that video will be on the different types of dissertations and why we've chosen them.